so hello friends in this video we are now going to start with the polycythemia vera and the other myoproliferative disorder from the harrison book okay harrison internal medicine from that we will cover all the points of the polycythemia vera and the other myoproliferative disorders in our upcoming videos okay so in this video first we will discuss about the polycythemia vera before discussing polycythemia vera we will look for the who classification of the chronic myeloproliferative disease okay WHO classification of the chronic myeloproliferative disease so what are the classification so first is your chronic myelogenous leukemia the second is your chronic neutrophilic leukemia the third one is your chronic eosinophilic leukemia the fourth one is your polycythemia vera which we will discuss in detail in this video the fifth is your primary myelofibrosis the sixth is essential thrombocytosis the seventh is your mastocytosis okay this is mastocytosis and the last is your myeloproliferative neoplasm so this is the basic classification by the who okay of the chronic myeloproliferative disease for the first is chronic myelogenous leukemia the second is chronic neutrophilic leukemia the third one is chronic eosinophilic leukemia polycythemia vera then your primary myelofibrosis then your essential thrombocytosis then mastocytosis then your myeloproliferative neoplasm okay so this is the who classification of chronic myeloproliferative disease now moving to the next one that is your polycythemia vera we will discuss in detail about polycythemia vera okay so what is polycythemia vera look for the definition what i am going to tell so it is increase it is just increase normal rbc or platelets or granulocyte okay increase in number of normal rbc mind it normal rbc normal platelets and granulocyte in absence of any recognizable physiological stimulus okay so in absence of any recognizable physiological stimulus if there is increase in number of normal rbc platelet or granulocyte that will be called as polycythemia vera so this is the basic definition okay what are the clinical feature which you will get in this polycythemia vera so splenomegaly is initial presenting sign in polycythemia vera okay so splenomegaly is the initial presenting sign in polycythemia vera the next is your and the polycythemia vera is first recognized by discovery of your high hemoglobin or hematocrit when you will do a cbc then you will encounter high hemoglobin or high hematocrit and this is the first thing by which you will recognize that that patient is suffering from polycythemia vera okay now the other clinical features so this is not a clinical feature this is a diagnostical feature okay the other thing the next clinical feature important that is known as aquagenic pruritus okay aquagenic pruritus will be present in the presence of polycythemia vera then due to increase in number of rbc uh, platelets and uh, granulocyte there will be uh, increase hyper viscosity okay there will be increase hyper viscosity and this increase hyper viscosity can cause uh, your vertigo it can cause headache it can cause visual disorder because due to high increase hyper viscosity blood flow will be less so there will be vertigo there will be headache there will be visual disorders there may be transient ischemic attacks so these are the clinical feature which are associated with your polycythemia vera the next there may be venous or arterial thrombosis you may get venous or arterial thrombosis you may get intra abdominal venous thrombosis okay intra abdominal venous thrombosis is common and the most common is your hepatic vein obstruction if hepatic vein obstruction will be there then that will be fatal okay that can cause death so intra abdominal venous thrombosis may be there and if uh, that vein is hepatic vein then that may lead to death clear the next is your erythema burning pain in extremity extremities okay pain in extremities so these are the other signs erythema burning pain in extremities okay and uh, this symptom complex this symptom complex is also known as erythro melangia okay this symptom complex is also known as erythro melangia okay guys this erythema burning pain pain in extremities this symptom complex is known as erythro melangia so these are the clinical features which are associated with your polycythemia vera okay now coming to the etiology what is the etiology behind the polycythemia vera so in maximum cases the etiology is unknown okay but uh, we uh, some hypothesis is there which uh, tell that 
erythropoietin and thrombopoietin erythropoietin and thrombopoietin receptors action is is uh, there will be mutation in these receptors okay erythropoietin and thrombopoietin receptors and erythropoietin and thrombopoietin receptor action is conducted through your jack pathway remember this this action is conducted through jack pathway and mutation in these receptors causes constitutive activation of this receptor okay means in the absence of a stimulus in the absence of thrombopoietin or erythropoietin these receptors will keep acting okay so even there will be absence of erythropoietin or thrombopoietin these receptors will continue to work okay that is known as constitutive activation and that is due to the mutation so this may lead to your polycythemia vera okay in the absence of stimulus erythrocytosis and thrombocytosis goes on and the most common mutation is v617 f mutation okay it usually takes place so this is the basic etiology behind this now moving to the uh, causes behind this what are the causes for polycythemia vera so the first is your relative erythrocytosis you have to look that it is a relative erythrocytosis or it is absolute erythrocytosis okay because there are some situations in which there is a relative erythrocytosis that is not actual polycythemia vera because this is relative erythrocytosis so you have to differentiate between relative erythrocytosis and absolute erythrocytosis so how you will uh, going to differentiate look so the first condition that is there may be hemo concentration that is uh, secondary to dehydration okay secondary to dehydration there may be hemo concentration that is giving your relative erythrocytosis like condition the second is your use of diuretics okay diuretics will cause loss of uh, uh, water that may lead to dehydration that may lead to hemo concentration okay and causes relative erythrocytosis the second one is your ethanol abuse ethanol abuse same reason is associated with ethanol abuse the next one is your use of androgens or tobacco use of androgens or tobacco so these four conditions are causing your relative erythrocytosis okay hemo concentration diuretics ethanol use androgens or tobacco clear now moving to the next one that is your absolute erythrocytosis what are the causes behind the absolute erythrocytosis so now looking for the causes behind the absolute erythrocytosis so taking the next slide okay so the what are the causes behind the absolute erythrocytosis the first cause is hypoxia the fox the first cause in absolute erythrocytosis is your hypoxia okay and what are the causes inside this hypoxia there may be co intoxication there may be increase high o2 affinity hemoglobin that may be due to high altitude that may be due to pulmonary diseases okay that may be due to pulmonary disease that uh, may be hypoxia may be due to right to left cardiac shunt okay right to left cardiac shunt that may be due to sleep apnea syndrome that may be due to hepatopulmonary syndrome okay so these are the causes according to harrison of the hypoxia which may lead to your polycythemia vera the next is your renal diseases okay so you focus on this causes hypoxia then these are the causes for the hypoxia and then renal disease in renal diseases you may get renal artery stenosis you may get focal sclerosing okay or um, that is membranous glomerulonephritis you may get post renal transplantation that may be due to renal cyst or that may be due to barter syndrome so these are the causes in the renal disease okay the next one is your the next cause that is tumors okay that may be due to tumors so that may be due to hypernephroma okay that is related to kidney nephrons hypernephroma that uh, may be lead to due to hepatoma so hypernephroma hepatoma or adrenal tumor or your pheochromocytoma okay cerebral hemangioblastoma cerebral hemangioblastoma so these are the tumors which are usually associated with the polycythemia vera so this they may be the cause of the polycythemia vera okay hypernephroma hepatoma adrenal tumor then your uh, postrenal uh, sorry then your pheochromocytoma and several hemangioblastoma the next is your use of drugs drugs in this androgen or recombinant erythropoietin so this also can cause uh, polycythemia vera then familial that is uh, associated with normal hemoglobin function okay now discuss the next slide 
part of the family are causes. So that may be due to erythropoiety, receptor mutation that we have discussed. Okay, that may be due to erythrocyte, uh, erythropoiety, receptor mutation. That may be due to VHL mutation, and this VHL mutation is also known as Chubas polycythemia. Okay, this is also known as Chubas polycythemia. Okay, and in this, that due to VHL mutation, there will be increased hypoxia inducible factor one and two. And that causes your polycythemia vera. Clear? The third one is two, 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 three, BPG mutation. The next one is your polycythemia vera. So these are the causes in the family. Okay. So till now we have discussed about the causes. What are the causes? So that uh, causes may be associated with your hypoxia. First we have discussed about relative erythrocytosis. They are causes we have discussed. Then absolute causes, hypoxia, renal diseases, then tumors, then drugs, and then family causes. Okay. So these are the basic causes behind that. Now. After discussing the cause, now we are moving for the diagnosis of the patient with polycythemia. That is very important. Okay, in medicine, diagnosis is very important. So we will discuss diagnosis according to Harrison. Okay, so be alert. And if you have not subscribed our channel, then please subscribe. Okay, and share with your friends. So first, I have told that uh, you will recognize, uh, you will doubt, uh, uh, get doubt of the polycythemia vera when you will encounter high hemoglobin or high hematocrit in the CBC. So, first is your increase uh, hemoglobin or your hematocrit. Okay, you will encounter increase hemoglobin or hematocrit. Then you will measure RBC mass to rule out relative erythrocytosis. Okay, you have to measure RBC mass. Yes, hemoglobin or hematocrit is engaged, but it may be due to dehydration, it may be due to the causes of the relative erythrocytosis. So, you have to measure RBC mass. If RBC mass is normal, if hemoglobin is increased or hematocrit increased but RBC mass is normal then it is due to it is the case of relative erythrocytosis okay it is the case of relative erythrocytosis but if RBC mass you have get RBC mass is elevated if RBC mass is elevated then you have to measure serum erythropoietin level just you have to go and measure the serum erythropoietin level okay if RBC mass is normal then relative erythrocytosis but it, if it is elevated then you have to measure serum erythropoietin level okay now if serum erythropoietin level is decreased then that is the diagnosis for the polycythemia vera and that is confirming your JAK2 mutation that is pathway mutation that is receptor mutation okay but if serum erythropoietin level is elevated because if serum erythropoietin level is decreased then the cause at the the cause will be at the receptor level okay so we are confirming polycythemia vera due to jack 2 mutation but if serum erythropoietin is elevated then you have to go and measure the arterial o2 saturation level you have to measure arterial o2 saturation level okay now if arterial o2 saturation level is decreased then it is uh, then you have to do diagnostic evaluation for the heart or any lung disease because of the decrease in arterial O2 situation. If arterial O2 situation is decreased, then you have to diagnose, uh, go for the diagnostic evolution for the heart or lung disease. Mind it. If arterial O2 situation level is normal, then you have to look for the patient that patient is a smoker or not. Okay. If patient is a smoker, if support if patient is not, if patient is no and uh, not a smoking, then you have to just measure hemoglobin O2 affinity. You have to measure hemoglobin O2 affinity. Okay, I will uh, proceed from this point in next slide. Okay, no, no sign. If patient is a smoker, yes, if patient is a smoker, then you have to measure just carboxy hemoglobin level. You have to measure carboxy hemoglobin level. And if that carboxy hemoglobin level is elevated, elevated, then it is known as a smoker's polycythemia. Okay, so the diagnosis is complete. A smoker's polycythemia. Okay, so again lifting. If hemoglobin or hematocrit is uh, raised, then you have to measure RBC mass to rule out relative erythrocytosis. Then, if it is elevated, then serum erythropoietin level. If decreased, then polycythemia due to mutation of the receptor. If elevated, then arterial O2 saturation. If decreased, then you have to uh, go for the heart or lung disease. If normal, then a smoker. And if yes, then carboxyhemoglobin level. If elevated, then a smoker's polycythemia. If no, then hemoglobin O2 affinity you have to measure. Now, after measuring hemoglobin O2 affinity level, if hemoglobin O2 affinity level is increased or it may be normal so if hemoglobin o2 level is increased then it is o2 affinity hemoglobinopathy okay it is o2 affinity hemoglobinopathy or if that is normal then you have to first search 
for your boosters for tumors as source of erythropoietin okay your boosters for the tumors as a source of erythropoietin you have to go for the renal ultrasound you have to go for the ct of the head to look out to rule out the cerebral hemangioblastoma then you have to go for the ct of pelvis to rule out the uterine leiomyoma and you have to look for the ct of abdomen also to look out the hepatoma so this is the complete diagnosis of the patient with the polycythemia mela okay now after one more one more i think i want to discuss here that is hersen is mentioning that is only there are uh, three situations okay only three situations three situations are possible in which you will get microcytic erythrocytosis only three situations in which you will get microcytic erythrocytosis okay what are the three situations the first one is your beta thalassemia trait the second one is your hypoxia erythrocytosis and the third one is your polycythemia so these are the three uh, possible for the microcytic erythrocytosis beta thalassemia trait then here hypoxia erythrocytosis then pv okay now what is the treatment after diagnosis we will treat the patient so the treatment we can do phlebotomy and this phlebotomy serves initially to reduce hypervascosity okay and along with phlebotomy we will induce iron deficiency okay so phlebotomy phlebotomy and iron deficiency we will do phlebotomy along with the induction of iron deficiency in most patient as according to harrison once iron deficiency state is achieved phlebotomy is required only at the interval of 3 months okay friends next next you will give pegylated interferon alpha that produces complete remission in polycythemia then one drug that is enagrelide you will give enagrelide okay this is phosphodiesterase inhibitor and that will decrease your platelet count okay and it is enagrelide this drug enagrelide is preferable over hydroxyurea you will look you will see many places at many places you will give, encounter hydroxyurea but in compared to hydroxyurea this enagrelide is better okay and splenectomy it massive splenomegaly unresponsive to therapy there then you will do splenectomy okay so this is all about your polycythemia vera okay so in next video uh, we will start with the bleeding disorder okay so thank you watching best of luck and if you have not subscribed our channel then please subscribe us and support us okay so thank you